and like just really get into a song and I feel like she does that so I was like I think that'd be my best bet otherwise Blake Shelton because obviously the country thing and I feel like he's just like the dad of country music and I just that would have been also a dream so it's either those two and those were the two that turned around so <laughs> So what happens, to, I have, I'll be honest with you, I grew up watching American Idol all the time. I remember being a kid, you're a few years younger than me. Um, but when American Idol first came out, and you know, we're just sitting there laughing at school about, you know, Simon just ripping into all these people and singing, oh, yeah. she bangs, she bangs. <laughs> have you seen that one? No. American Idol, oh, it's like one of the first few seasons, this like Asian guy comes on there and he just uh, sings, she bangs, she bangs. <laughs> That was his sing his song. It's one of those classic auditions of all time. Do you remember um, Pants on the Ground guy? Yes, I remember that one. I do. He did Pants on the Ground, Pants on the Ground, looking like a fool with your pants on the ground, hat turn. I know the whole song. <laughs> I feel so bad for some of those people. They just like set them up for, for failure. They really do. And I think that like they don't, obviously we all know that it's a joke, but they're made to believe that it's not and i feel really bad i know but that was so the mean. difference that's what i kind of enjoyed watching you know on american idol oh, yeah. but i mean the voice was cool in x factor and everything but there wasn't you didn't there was no epic failures and i felt like they went away from that on american idol a little bit whenever um you know simon cowell left um so i haven't watched the voice as much i've watched like people's beginning auditions but i've never really followed it so what happens on the voice after you get chosen by kelly so they turn around, you get on that team, and then you do a, oh gosh, what is first? A battle, so that's with someone else on your team. So the coach picks a song, and you do a duet with someone on your team. So you both learn the song. And I remember being so terrified when I found out who my duet partner was and what my song was, because I, honestly, I wasn't terrified. I was, like, really upset, <laughs> because... I'm a country artist. Like I like to sing country songs. That's like my wheelhouse. And they gave me Nobody Wants to Be Lonely with Eli. And um, he, oh gosh, he sang something in Spanish for his, uh, for his blind audition. And he's so good. Like he just is like, wow. So anyways, I get Nobody Wants to Be Lonely. It, half the song is in Spanish. I'm like, I don't know how I'm gonna do this. I just was like so confused why I got chosen to do this. Cause usually the partnerships make more sense. So anyways, I learned this song. Long story short, I ended up loving it. It was amazing. I asked uh, Eli if he would teach me the Spanish so I could like sing the Spanish parts. So he recorded it. And I just remember going on my walks every day and just listen to it over and over and over and over. Um, and I mean, it was like my favorite song, I think, on the whole show because I worked so hard on it, like relentlessly every single day. Um, so we did that battle where you sing with someone else on your, you sing the same song with someone else on your same team. And I won that. What's the turnaround on that? Like a week between um, battles or after you audition? It was about two weeks, two to, th two to three weeks, I think, because you have... You have wardrobe, you have vocal lessons, you have rehearsal, you have band practice, you have dress rehearsal, one more band practice, and then you have another dress rehearsal or something. And then, or you have a rehearsal where you're not wearing your outfits, and then you have the dress rehearsal because they have to see like how your outfit goes with the lighting and stuff like that. Now, whenever you say lessons, who's coaching you? Uh, there's like, I think four different vocal coaches, but when you make it, past like the battles then everybody works with Trelawney who is like the best she's so good I work with Brett Manning here in town and I think I'd say Brett and Trelawney are like top tier like best vocal coaches ever because I, I learned a lot from Brett so I had like this really good toolbox to use when I went into the voice and then Trelawney just kind of like helped me polish it you know what I mean um so you do that a couple times, like two or three times. Now my dog is whining. Um. <laughs> Somebody did ask what season you were on. She was on se season 19, correct? Yes. I think it was. <laughs> I, I thought it was, it was, that's what it said on YouTube. It was season 19 of The Voice. Yes. Um, are, are you a little skeptical about where, I mean, I know that they are probably really talented. Um, so I'm a golfer and I have a golf coach. Um, I'm, I'm skeptical of listening to, because there's a million different ways to skin a cat. 
So are you skeptical about working with somebody new or are you excited to get vocal lessons with somebody new? I was very skeptical because working with brett he just like knows my voice so well and knows like what it takes to like warm me up and get me to like a place i need to be for a song and like stuff like that because i've been working with him for eight years like maybe even longer i think it's eight but anyway um i was very uh like nervous i was like oh i don't know like if i really want to do it i don't know if i need it not in like a overconfident way i just was like can I use mine back home? Like that kind of thing. Um, but like, um, but I started working with her and she was just like so kind and like, I can't, I like can't even explain it. It was just like, she, she understands not just my voice, but like a female voice and like, just like what it takes to warm, warm that up and get it working. But, um, yeah, I was definitely like not excited for it. And then I did it and I was like, oh, okay, it's not that bad. <laughs> well, was something that she taught you that you, you know, are still using to this day? Breathing. This like breathing exercise she taught me one time. I was like laying on the ground. I was like, what is this? But um, I use it to this day. Mm. Like I, I think about exactly what she said, where to breathe in, where to hold it, how to sing, how to like let it out as like slowly as possible. Cause like, if you think about, like I told my mom about you, that whole chorus is like one breath. And like, given when I cut it, like in a vocal booth, I can chop it into pieces. But like when I sing it live, there's nowhere to break. So I just have to like take a big fat breath and sing through it. Same with my song, Little Miss, the chorus is one breath. It's like impossible to do it with a break in the middle. But what she taught me about breathing, like it helps me get through it. I mean, obviously sometimes when I'm running around on stage, I still can't do it, but <laughs> I'm like backing tracks. <laughs> that's something that's important to you when you're on stage is running around and trying to put on a good show. Yeah, I, I love performing live. That's like my favorite thing.